everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today is going to be something especially for you if you're just beginning let's say you just bought your first big box of miniatures maybe you went out and got a starter box like this maybe you saw a kit you really loved maybe it's a board game but at any rate you've decided you want to get into miniature painting you've got the minis but now the question is what do you do what do you buy this video is going to walk you through the first six months of your purchases in miniature painting. So, let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get into the technique and learn it, Vinci V. So as we begin, a little note. Everything I'm going to talk about, I have a link to down in the description. Now, most of those links will be to Amazon, but you don't need to purchase them. The ones I'm linking are not anything special or magical or the exact ones. I just wanted to make sure you had a real example of what this thing is I'm talking about. If you don't want to shop at Amazon, hey, I understand that. You can also go to eBay or you can go to your local stores or anywhere you can find this stuff and that's fine. I just wanted to make sure you could see exactly what I mean so there was no confusion. All right, so where do we start? We start with some of the simple tools you're gonna need. The first thing you need to pick up is a hobby knife. This is sometimes thought of as an X-Acto blade or whatever the case. Now here comes my first recommendation. When you go to the hobby store, you're going to see all sorts of these little five packs of blades or a hobby knife or something like that available. And they're gonna be pretty expensive. My advice, don't buy those, okay? Instead, go on to Amazon or something like that, uh, eBay, whatever, and you can find medical grade scalpels in size 11, effectively the same as what we use, and you can buy those in bulk incredibly cheap. So you can get a hundred or so X-Acto blades, uh, as well as the little, you know, holder for them, the handle, as it were, usually for around eight to ten dollars. It's gonna set you up for basically ever and you'll spend much less than you would for something of lower quality or equal quality from the hobby store. And that sort of leads to one of my first points. The hobby store is a great resource, but all of your local stores, your local arts and craft store, your local hardware store, that's often going to be a better resource because when products are made specifically for the hobby, they're often more expensive. So make sure you're hitting up those other local retailers because they might have the same products at a much cheaper price. All right, the next thing you're going to need is some clippers. Now, my recommendation is again, don't go to the hobby store. You can get them there, but they're going to be way more expensive. Don't go out and buy your Tamiya God hand right away. Don't spend $50 on these. That's all ridiculous. Go to the hardware store and find a flush, flat back clipper. So the key being it has to have a flat side on it to make a clean cut against the sprue when you're cutting. You can usually find these at the hardware store for just a couple dollars. Most of the time they're gonna be plenty durable, they're gonna be uh, plenty tough, and they'll be a heck of a lot cheaper. And that initial set of clippers is gonna last you for a long, long time. You've got your clippers, you've clipped things out, you've scraped them, but you gotta assemble them. Now, a lot of kits like this, easy to build, they don't actually require glue, but it's something you're gonna need. Now, again, there are many different options on the market, and there's lots of things over time that I'd recommend investing in, but let's keep it simple. And that is to say, simple old Zappa Gap CA glue. That kind of super glue is really all you need to start out. And then eventually you can look at plastic glues or stuff like that. But a good CA glue or super glue, again, linked below, is really all you need. To now start. we've got a big question. Paints. We've got to get some paint for these guys. But what do we buy? Oh my goodness. The options are overwhelming. Well, first we got to start with primer, right? Before we can actually put paint on, we've got to have primer. Now, somewhere down the line, spoilers for the end of this video, we're gonna talk about an airbrush. But that's not yet. 
This is month one of you hobbying, so we gotta keep it simple. That means rattle cans. Rattle cans are a perfectly acceptable primer. They're what I used when I started out for probably the first six months. Nothing wrong with them at all. Now again, you can use rattle cans from some game producer from Citadel, you know, say Games Workshop or from Army Painter or anything like that. But if you really like paying three times the amount for the exact same product with a different label, go for it. I would say that you've got two options I would recommend. And again, I'm gonna send you to your local stores. Option one, you go to the hardware store. They got a big old row of spray cans. Get yourself a good flat black, make sure it's nice and or make sure it's sort of a flat, not a satin or glossy black or something like that. Jobs are good. You can also buy colored versions of it if you're wanting to do, uh, like let's say you're doing mostly ultramarines. Great, go buy a blue primer, right? Why not? Or if you're doing mostly uh, something like the Stormcast and you're gonna put them, make them all white uh, because you're using the, um, you know, whatever color scheme that is, Celestial Vindicators, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Sure, then buy like a light gray, right? Something like that. That's option one. You can find rattle can primers, obviously, at your store, your hardware store for a few dollars. The other option is you can go to your local art store. Your art store has sort of artist quality spray paint. This is what you see a lot of people using maybe in those videos on Facebook or for spray can art. It's a few dollars more usually something like six to eight dollars us if you're here but still far cheaper than those branded game rattle cans and those are actually quite a bit higher quality and they have switchable tips so you can actually get like tips that spray in tighter uh spray patterns so they're kind of cooler to use now that we've got things primed we actually have to paint them and again oh boy are there so many options so what do we buy? Well, there's lots of different paints out there on the market, and here's the big secret. Almost all of them made for the miniature hobby, so all the miniature painting paints, the ones that are branded from a company specifically to paint miniatures, they're all mostly the same. There are some differences. There are some differences in how well they base coat or how well they glaze or, you know, all those sorts of things. It's not that there's no difference. There is, and it matters, but it generally only matters down the line once you actually become experienced in all the techniques of miniature painting. So where do you begin? Well, my recommendation is, sadly, not starting with Games Workshop. They have little flip tops. Their pots only come in 12 milliliters. They're more expensive, price per milliliter, than any, almost any other paint on the market. They're annoying, they dry out. I just, I wouldn't recommend it. Now that being said, something like their shade line can be really useful for washes at the beginning. So I would recommend you pick up a couple of those, like an Agrax Earth Shade or a Reichland Flesh Shade. But for your actual paints, the mainline paints you're gonna be putting on the miniatures, my answer here is pretty simple. Good old Vallejo model color. Vallejo makes two starter sets, one for model color and one for game color. Both of them are fine. They're relatively inexpensive. Again, they can be ordered on Amazon. I'll, I'll link it below just so you see what I'm talking about. Um, but you can also find them in stores. Lots of stores, even game stores carry these. It really does come with a pretty wide range of colors, most of what you're going to need to get started. You don't need to go out and buy 200 paints to get miniature painting. I see a lot of people just jump in feet first, like they're just into the middle of the ocean, and it's just overwhelming. You can certainly expand your paint range over time. You can buy paints slowly, pick colors that you like, and so on. Alternatives, if you're not a Vallejo fan, or for some reason it's not available near you, that's another advantage of it. It is available almost everywhere in the world. Uh, Pro Acryl, uh, I really like Pro Acryl. It's from um, it's Jason Craze from Monument Hobbies. It's a really great paint set. It's very beginner friendly. It's a wonderful paint set. They do have starter sets available, um, so you can check that out. I'll link their website. And then finally. AK Interactive 3rd Gen. It was really made to be uh, sort of a, the, a new formulation and a, a match to Vallejo colors. There are also starter sets of that available. 
um, that's another good one. I really like those paints. They're quite uh, well formulated. They cover well. Um, they don't really break down easy. Things like their white are actually good. It's not just crap. Uh, one of the things you'll find as you get into miniature painting is that most companies' white is pretty garbage. Um, but AK Interactive has a good uh, white color, which if is If nice. we've got paint, then we're also going to need brushes. This is another place I see people get confused because, yet again, there are a lot of brushes on the market. So where do we begin? Well, we keep it simple, as always. When it comes to synthetic brushes, which is what you're going to want to start out for the majority of your brushes, you're just going to buy big packs. You're not going to worry about, don't overspend money on synthetics. Synthetics curl, they dry, they have a short lifespan when working with acrylic paints. They will not last. I really cannot impress this upon you enough. You will ruin these brushes, often quickly. So your goal is to get a lot of them relatively cheaply. I'm gonna link a brush pack down below I happen to like, but you can find these multi brush packs of synthetics all over the place. Again, hit your local art store, you'll see them. They're fine. Buy a couple of them. They're usually only five or six bucks. See which ones you like. Experiment, right? It's, it's, this is a good way to go. And then when you use them and they die and the tip curls and they become horrible, throw them in the trash. Now, when it comes to nice brushes, a good sable brush in a size one is a decent investment. There are a couple places that have these sable brushes I like. They will make a difference in your painting because they do make paint easier to control, but you do not use them for everything. Your nice sable brushes are about specific tasks, okay? They are about doing detail work or eyes or final highlights or things like that where you need precise control with your brush. So please don't use these expensive brushes everywhere. Again, I'll link uh, of one down below. I prefer the Raphael 8404s, but they are hard to find. Windsor & Newton Series 7 can also be a good one. And yet again, Monument Hobbies and Jason Craze has a really great set of sable brushes that are actually really nice and frankly, way more affordable than anything else on the market that, that's made from artist brushes. The final brush type we need is dry brushes. Dry brushes are really important. And most people, when they start out, buy these little, flat, crappy dry brushes. And guess what? They're actually truly horrible. They're bad at that task. And if you're buying something from a manufacturer like Games Workshop, well, then you're overpaying for a bad product. So that's a double lose. Nobody likes a double lose. So what do we do instead? Well, the key there is makeup brushes. Yes. Big packs of cheap makeup brushes, again, Amazon, eBay, the dollar store is your friend. These are brushes meant for putting on blush or eyeshadow or those kinds of things. And they're super soft and they're fantastic dry brushes. They will work much better than any of those long flat dry brushes for, that you buy and pay too much money for from a game manufacturer. And you can clean them really easy. But if they do break down or die, who cares? You toss in the trash, you can usually get five, 10, 50 of them, depending on how big you're buying them, uh, for again, less than $10. Final thing you need to start, to start. This is your month one cost of entry items. A good light. Now, a lot of people don't think about this, but it is really important. A good light is critical to painting. Good lights can be many different things. You can get something like architect or drafting lights like I have. There's all sorts of setups, but I wouldn't recommend those to start. To start, all you need is a good desk lamp or something like that, something that can hold a light bulb and sit on your desk in a reasonable way. Could be a little clampy thing, could be a traditional desk lamp. I know Ikea has a little clamp on desk lamps people really like, fine. You want it so it's kind of adjustable. And then you want to get a daylight balanced bulb, usually in 5,000 to 5,500 K. Okay. That's what you want. Something with that nice, clean, clear 
daylight balance light. You want a bright light. Painting tiny details is hard on your eyes. And if you have to strain your eyes to paint, you will find you paint less and you paint less well. The final stuff is what I call free stuff. It's not actually free, but it's sort of close enough. You need some kind of cup <laughs> to put water in. An old mason jar, a red solo cup, whatever. Some kind of cup to put water in, because you're going to need to rinse your brushes. So get that. I don't know, find a cup in your house. It's not hard. And then water. Pretty close to free. The other item you need is kitchen roll or paper towel. It has lots of different names, but you need some sheets of paper towel. Uh, it needs to be by you at all times. One of the keys to painting is that you don't ever take your paint from the palette that you're working on, dip your brush in it, and then go directly to the miniature. That's a good way to have your miniature get flooded with paint, to have paint out of control. You want a little paper towel next to your, your painting area that you touch into the paint, and then you touch the paper towel, and then you paint the miniature. Just that small change in your painting routine will dramatically improve your experience while painting. And it's such a small, simple thing. We just wick away the excess first. We always wick away the excess. Simple and easy. Three months in, here we go. So now we're at the three month mark. We've been painting, we're starting to understand this. What's our next investment in the hobby? Well, there's sort of two things I would recommend. The first thing is varnish. Get yourself some varnish. Now my preference is for either AK Interactive or MIG Ultra Matte Varnish. Again, linked below. One of the biggest problems I see newer painters have when they paint is that they use a lot of different paints and it has a lot of different finishes. Their miniatures look super glossy and weird because the light is reflecting in bad places and it just makes it look amateurish and, and bad. Frankly, I don't know how to say it. It makes it look bad. That's basically it. A good varnish that you can brush on, and by the way, this is completely brushable or airbrushable, as we see later, is what I prefer. And yes, you can get rattle can stuff. So like Tester's Dull Coat is a pretty popular one out there on the market. But that rattle can varnish smells really bad. You have to go outside to varnish, and it, you always risk it frosting. Frosting is when you spray the varnish and there's a little too much humidity. Some of that humidity gets trapped in the varnish and then it frosts over and ruins your whole paint job. Not a great day, not a great day. Uh, so instead, if you don't have an airbrush, I prefer to just use something like AK Interactive. It's fully brush onable. Get yourself an old brush, old brush. Do not use a nice brush here. Warning, do not use a nice brush. And you just brush on some of that ultra matte varnish and boom, it'll even out the finish of everything and your miniature will look way better. The wet palette is your next investment. Again, there are several on the market, but you don't need to go nuts. You can make your own with a simple Ziploc container, a sponge, and some, uh, some Reynolds non-wax baking paper. That's pretty easy. I have a video on this. I will link my video on wet palettes up there. But you can also just go again to your local art store or to Amazon or something like that and buy a Masterson wet palette. It's the classic one. It's fine. My one piece of advice with the Masterson, it comes with some artist grade wet palette paper. Immediately take that and throw that in the trash. It is not for us. That is for acrylic artists that are using big heavy body acrylics and painting on canvas and they're trying to keep that wet. It is a very different paper. It has a very different level of osmosis. It is not good for miniature paints. You throw that paper in the trash, you get yourself some Reynolds baking paper or whatever the equivalent is in your country, like non-wax baking paper, the thing you'd use to like, you know, make cookies or something. Uh, and you cut a piece of that out and you put it on the palette. That's all you need. Here's a fun tip for your wet palette. When you have that wet palette, Put a little piece of copper wire in there, or maybe a couple pennies on the corner, uh, something like that. It that It's antimicrobial and it helps avoid your palette getting stinky and getting mold in it. Now we're six months in, okay? What's our sort of final hobby purchase on the trajectory of our journey? 
At six months, our final purchase is gonna be an airbrush. I know that might sound crazy. This is the most expensive thing I'm gonna recommend, and that's why I say you wait till six months to do it. Make sure this hobby is gonna stick and it's something you want to invest in. A good airbrush setup is generally pretty cheap. It's only about $100. It's cheaper than, just to say, buying even half the figs that you're, you might need for your army. Uh, might cost about the same amount or more. And it is invaluable. An airbrush lets you prime any time of year, in any weather, prime things quickly. It lets you establish base coats in different colors fast. It lets you blend things smoothly. The high end on an airbrush is incredibly vast. And it's a skill that you need to work just like anything else. Investing in an airbrush will really make your life so much better, so much simpler, and the hobby so much more enjoyable. It is truly the best hobby purchase I ever made. You don't necessarily need a whole bunch of stuff. I will link a video that I have. It's very old, but it's still valuable called Just Buy an Airbrush, where I really go into detail on it. Uh, for all the different ancillary products you can use. But really all you need is the airbrush, the hose, and then the the, uh, the thing that makes air, the compressor. There we go, that word would not come to my head. Uh, and you're good to go. A good sort of, uh, what are they called, masters like G22 or G23. I will link the starter kit. That's what I started with. I used it for a good six months and I loved it. It made priming and painting my big monsters and stuff like that and priming my regular figures so much easier. It opens the door to things like zenithal highlighting. Video up above. And it just is going to be a game changer for your hobby. I hope this video was helpful to you if you're just starting out on the hobby. I've been painting for 23 years now. I've been doing it pseudo-professionally, I guess. I don't know what that means. For the last eight. It is a hobby that gives me endless joy. I love doing this. I love sharing this hobby with people. And I hope this gives you an idea of how you can get going with the hobby without breaking your what wallet. What I tried to highlight here is those things that I think are essential to get started for your six months in the hobby. So if you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe, we have new hobby cheating here every Saturday. If you've got questions about anything I said, drop those down below. I always answer every comment. But I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.